God never intended that work would be gruesome and hard and we yeah. hate it. Like that's yeah. not the way that he created work to be. It was to express worship unto him, to be like him. I think sometimes we get into this rut of feeling that because things have been so hard, we don't see a way out. Mm-hmm. We're almost jaded to the point where we don't believe that some things can happen for us. And when we look at other people, maybe succeeding, we become sort of negative, you know, in looking at them and saying, oh, well, must be nice for you. Well, it can be great for you too. You're listening to the Driven Introvert Podcast, a faith-inspired space for purposeful introverts who are ready to step out with courage and pursue their big ideas. If you are an introvert who is tired of letting fear dictate what you do and how you do it, then this podcast is for you. I'm here to remind you that the life and work you've dreamed about is possible and your unique personality is not a limitation to achieving it. I'm your host, Remy Roy, and I'm the co-founder of ShePacked.com. On this podcast, I'll feature introverts and others with unique perspectives on what it means to follow dreams, passionately build out ideas, and live a life that matters. Expect inspiring conversations, resources, reflections, and stories on faith, life, and work. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We're excited to bring you this episode. I'm your host, Remy Roy, and um, I have Candice Zachary in the studio with me. Hi, Candice. Hey, Remy. How are you? I'm good. It's so good to see you. So good to have you on the podcast today. Yeah. So Candice is the co-founder of ShePact. We run ShePact together. And I'm really grateful that I get to do uh, something like this with someone who has such a heart for God and for women to really see them thrive and grow in every season. And yes, she'll be joining me every now and then on the podcast. We're going to be having some great conversations uh, around some very uh, relevant topics for women, for introverts. And yeah, today we get to do just that. So what are we talking about today, Candice? Yeah, so today we are going to talk about something that takes up a lot of space and time in our lives, which is work, Mm -hmm. and how that can be a fulfilling part of our lives if we really want it to. So we're going to have a discussion about that. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes, we're talking about work. Yes, this is the thing that we almost do one way or the other to, Mm -hmm. um, you know, make money for the things that we really, really need. Um, We have to do this to make money for rent, somewhere to live. We need healthcare, we need food, we need um, Mm -hmm. to go to school, we need to clothe ourselves, our children, all of that. So work is such a huge part of our lives. And we spend a lot of time at work, you know, compared to the time we spend with our families. You know, sometimes it can be um, a difficult thought when you think about it. Oh, I spend so much time at work, you know, compared to having, you know, fun with my family and all of that. So work is crucial. So we're going to talk about the idea of work and fulfillment and how it really evolves in different seasons. And um, I've been thinking about this concept a lot because, like I said, work is such a crucial part of our lives. And if we're not able to thrive in the work we do, it has the potential to just make everything else feel so incredibly difficult. So incredibly difficult. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you're not able to find joy in what you do every day and spend a lot of time doing, life can really be hard. I mean, I've been there and I know that a lot of people have this experience. I remember when I was working in corporate. I mean, I worked in corporate for just a, a short period of time, just a stint, but it was so hard for me. And it wasn't just the idea of corporate in itself, but I think it was because what I was doing, you know, the job that I had at the time, it wasn't exactly um, exciting to me. It wasn't Mm -hmm. fulfilling. It was very difficult. And that just was so hard. I mean, I genuinely believe that I was depressed for that time and um, trying to figure out, okay, how do I make sense of this? You know, how do I take all the feelings I'm feeling you know, about work and try to figure out, can I find a different reality for myself? And I think this is such a crucial concept that I feel like all of us will have to tackle at some point in our lives. Mm -hmm. If you are just blessed enough to be doing something that you're so excited to do, to get up and do every day, that's awesome. But if at some point you don't have that experience, you have to decide, 
can I find a different reality for myself? You know, and that's what I had to do. And I know that it's such a, it's such a privileged thing to think about, you know, it's privileged to be able to say that um, I don't like what I do. And I want to do something different. I want a different yeah. reality because I think a lot of people in so many areas of the world cannot do this. You know, they can't. They don't have the luxury to say, oh, I want to do this and not that. Definitely recognize that, that it's kind of like a luxury and from a you know privileged standpoint. And I'm thankful to God for that. But it was my reality. And I had to think, can I do something different? You know, yeah. can I figure out how to change this? And we'll probably certainly talk about uh, that experience. And, and I talked a little bit about the experience in the last episode. For everyone listening, um, I did share about this in uh, the episode where we interviewed uh, Coach Anna. And um, it was such a exciting time because I got to be coached live on the podcast wow. in thinking about that experience and um, how to frame it, how to reframe that experience because it was a difficult time for me. And I had to think, okay, have I failed in not being able to thrive you know, mm -hmm. it, in this part of my life, you know, in this part of my work and just putting that to rest and really thinking about that. So I encourage everyone to go listen if you haven't listened to that episode. And yes, um, it's such an important um, question to consider when we think about work and fulfillment. I was not fulfilled and I was trying to figure out how do I find, you know, fulfillment in my life. So I'm curious, Candice, um, when you think about you know, your experience just as a young woman before you maybe started your first job, what was your view of work, you know, as yeah. a young woman? And has that changed? Has it changed, you know, over time? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, growing up, my mom and dad seemed to really enjoy their work. So my mom is a teacher and my dad worked um, in corporate management. And um, when I saw them going to work, talking about work, interacting with the people that they work with, um, their coworkers, the people that they serve, it just always seemed positive. Um, mm -hmm. And so I never, as a young girl, felt that work was something to dread. In mm -hmm. fact, um, I think most people can remember the days when you were preteen, teenager, and there were things that you wanted and your parents were like, I'm not paying for that. Or, you know, you think money grows on trees. And so in my mind, I'm thinking I, I can't <laughs> wait till I work. Right. Make my um, own money. Yeah. So um, growing up, like I really thought, man, like to be able to work is such a gift. Um, and I actually started my first job when I was 16. Um, oh, what were you yeah. doing? So I worked at McDonald's. And it was not the best um, first job, but <laughs> but one of the things that I really enjoyed was being around people. And then mm -hmm. at the end of two weeks, having a paycheck where I could yeah. say, hey, those shoes that cost too much for my mom and dad to purchase, I can go now get them. Now I can them. get it. Um, yeah, now I can get it with my own money. But really, even before then... Um, because work just seemed to be so enjoyable from the people that I saw doing it, I saw work as an opportunity to be creative as well. So when I was in middle school, I actually started my first business. And yeah, um, I remember it you was, mentioned that before. Yeah, yeah. So it was one of those things where, again, my parents are like, those shoes cost too much. I know all your friends have them, but... If you want them, you got to find a way to earn them. And so I don't think they ever thought that for me, that would mean start something. They were probably thinking, oh, well, maybe she'll do something around the house and earn an allowance. Honey, no, I got some kids in the neighborhood and we started a whole car washing business and I loved oh my it. God. They got paid. I got paid. And at the end of the summer, I was able to get my Reebok. So yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, I love that. When you talk about how you viewed work as a child in relation to the people around you, I don't think that I ever consciously thought about it. Mm. But now that I'm just looking back, I don't think I really thought about it at all because I, I, I was raised by a single mom and she mm -hmm. walked a lot. You know, she was um, part of the church, so she did a lot of ministry and she just did all sorts of things. There were times where she 
uh, bought and sold things. There were times where she did like some sort of like contract jobs, you know, there were times. And for the most part, she was a seamstress. So she had like a little shop where she would make clothes for people. And at some point she had people working with her, but I, I never really thought about work in that way. I think I was just that kid that was just in my head most yeah. of the time. <laughs> and I was just a dreamer. So I never really thought in concrete terms about the work that I will do as an adult. You know, I never really thought about it. However, I do know that at some point or the other, somebody planted the idea of being a doctor in my mind. And I'm sure it's yeah. my mom. because Same come for on, me come too. On. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doctor, lawyer, doctor. something like that, Engineer, right? Engineer, yeah. things like that. I know. And um, I had that in my mind. And I remember I would, tell anyone who asked me that oh what do you want to be I want to be a gynecologist now I had no idea what a gynecologist (laughs) was like I couldn't even spell the word but I was so uh, excited about the idea of being a doctor for you Mm -hmm. to know that I never concretely really thought about it I didn't know what a doctor did I didn't know what a gynecologist did but as I began to grow older I realized that a lot of the thoughts in my head and the dreams in my head when it comes to work were not very practical Mm. you know and that of course began a journey where I began to feel a little bit insecure about that question of what do you want to do in future because I didn't know and the times that I would think about something it it was something that sounded so unserious because there was a point I'd be like oh I want to be a writer and I never told anyone that you Mm -hmm. know because at that time it's sad but I had the presence of mind to know that this is a very funny choice of a career to tell people that you want to be so I will just Mm. say I want to be a doctor even when I stopped wanting to be a doctor can can I ask you a question Mm -hmm. about that Remy so you mentioned how your mom kind of like gave you this vision of be a doctor right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and I can relate to that yeah however there was a moment for me when very similar to you where I realized okay that vision that my my mom and dad have for me is not the direction that I want to go in and Mm -hmm. when I realized that and I had to make decisions in college Mm -hmm. it was very hard to break away from the dreams Mm -hmm. of my mom and dad And I wonder for you, did you have that? Like, did you have a moment where you were like, I'm going to have to break it to my mom? Like, um, I'm probably not going to go that traditional Mm. route. Like when, when did that become like a, a real reality Mm. where you had to have that discussion and let mom know this is not the way (laughs) my life is going. Hi friend. Are you enjoying the podcast? May I ask you a favor? Please take a moment to leave a review of the show wherever you listen to podcasts. Reviews are very important and help other people find the Driven Introvert podcast. I'd really appreciate if you could rate the show and also leave a written review. You can review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now back to the podcast. Oh my God. It's so funny that you asked that question. I don't know. It must have been sometime after my first year in college because I, up until that time, I still thought I wanted to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And then I could not get into medical school. I didn't have um, the grades to get into medical school. So I thought, okay, I mean, I spoke to her and we're like, okay, what do we do? Like, okay, let me go do the next best thing. What is the next best thing? And we're looking for, maybe I would be, uh, a physiotherapist or something like that. I just, just something in the medical field. And yeah. it was just kind of difficult getting into, um, into those programs at the time. So I decided to do microbiology. And at that time, I think my school then you could, at least they sold us a dream that if you got into like a program, like microbiology after the first year, you could, if you had good grades, you could, you know, transfer into medical school if you took an exam or whatever but it never happened I think Mm -hmm. they just sold that to us because I don't for whatever reason but Mm -hmm. yeah so I went ahead and did microbiology and I I do remember that uh, she was disappointed that I couldn't get into medical school straight off the bat and um and I think it was probably in my second or third year like I knew that I wasn't doing medicine again because um I remember watching a documentary 
on TV. And it was something where a doctor was uh, doing surgery on a patient. And I'm like, yuck. <laughs> I'm like, no, I am not doing that. And I, I think that's what I decided. Okay, this this is over for me. But um, yeah, she was disappointed. I cannot remember mm. what that conversation, how that went or even when that happened. But I know it must have happened at some yeah. point. But I know that she was disappointed, you know, that I wasn't going to do that. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's I think it's a common um, experience for a lot of people who were sold that dream. And then at some point, you're like, I don't want to do this. I want to go a different route. And it's always a difficult conversation to have. But yeah, it it is an important one. And when, when you think about it from the perspective of our parents, they want us to do better than them, right? So mm-hmm. like, I think mm-hmm. about my mom and dad, their parents were farmers mm-hmm. and my mom and dad were the first ones in their families to go to school, college. go to college. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. my mom and dad, teacher, manager, like they'll, you know, pretty good. Yeah. And they're thinking, oh, my children are going to be doctors and lawyers yeah. and, Much you know, better. Yeah. yeah. And so I don't fault them for that. And I'm Mm-mm. grateful that they had a vision for me and was willing to do anything mm-hmm. to allow me to have work that would yeah. be, um, you know, be able to allow me to make a lot of money. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. But, but when I came into myself and realized what I really wanted, it was not the, it wasn't the money that was driving Mm me. Yeah. Um, it was more so the fulfillment, which is, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of what you and I have had discussions about, um, just in everyday terms. Um, and we're inviting people into right now. So this is, this is a really good discussion. I love it. Absolutely. And, you know, going back to that, um, idea of, the dreams that our parents have for us, I think that sometimes we're hard on them. Mm -hmm. We're hard on them because we feel like, oh, you know, parents shouldn't push their children to do this or that. But if we look at it from their perspective, they just want what's best for us. I know that some of them have a maybe not helpful way of going about it, but um, they just want what's best for us. They want to know that we can take care of ourselves. They want to know that we're going to be fine, you know, and not struggle like maybe they experience. Yeah, I know. I know. And even now that we are becoming parents, we are feeling that pressure. Mm -hmm. When you look at your kids and you're dreaming for their future, you have something in mind, you know, (laughs) and maybe maybe you're the parents that you'd be like, oh, I'll just let them do anything. But then as much as you want them to do anything, there are things that when they come to you and say, I want to do this, you'll be like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> right. you know. So that goes to show you that we're all the same. We just yeah. want the best for our kids. And like I, I was talking about in some other parts of the world where people don't have a lot of choices, sometimes you just got to take what, you know, your parents, I remember I was watching this movie. It's actually um, an Indian movie. It's a Bollywood movie, if you can mm-hmm. believe it. And, um, this story was about a, a, a man who he was a wrestler and he missed, he always narrowly missed the gold medal for mm. India to get it. And he always had this dream that he will have a son who will become a wrestler and who will get that title. You know, oh, that wow. was his big yeah. dream. Yeah. And in that movie, he never had sons. He always had daughter after daughter after daughter. And he was always so disappointed at some point, all the villagers knew of his dream and everyone right. will be waiting with bated breath, like it's going to be a girl, it's going to be a boy. Yeah. And one day his girls were grown and he was watching them and they were talking about how they beat up some boys at school <laughs> because they were rude to them. And he was like, oh my God, these girls are tough. So he decided, okay, I'm going to teach you guys how to be wrestlers. And he taught them how to be wrestlers. They didn't want to do it. You know, Mm -hmm. he will wake them up in the morning like we got to go practice. We got to do all these exercises and they hated it. But where I'm going with this story is this girls lived at the time where there were not many options for girls. The best thing they were going to do was get married at 14 and begin to have kids. That's Mm -hmm. it. You know, they lived in a village. So his dream that he could not let go of because it was so obsessive. And if you look at it, you might have thought, this is so negative. Why are you doing this to your daughters? And people told him Mm -hmm. that. But Mm -hmm. he was so adamant in teaching those girls how to be wrestlers. 
he was able to succeed and they both i think they both end up winning the gold medal for india wow. this is a real life yeah. story right yeah. and i'm like look at that obsessive nature that he took in really um, training those girls they have a better future you know mm-hmm. they were able to travel the world and do the sport and what they would have done if they didn't have that option, if he wasn't so obsessive about teaching them to do this, would be yeah. to just get married at 14. So yeah. sometimes I feel like we need to look at our parents and just give them some grace, right. you know? So let's talk about fulfillment. What does it really mean to mm. be fulfilled at work? What does fulfillment mean? When we use that word, what are we referring to? Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. So I will answer that from my own personal experience because I yes. feel like I have had seasons where I was fulfilled and other seasons where I was like, this is not for me. The way that I would describe fulfillment um, is where I am doing work, contributing, um, being productive in a way where it aligns with who I am, my -hmm. values, um, my gifts, my talents, my experiences, Mm -hmm. and Um, You know, that can mean different things for different people, because for some, as I mentioned earlier, like money was not and still is not a huge deal for me. Like I will leave a job (laughs) that pays well if it's not working for me. Um, Yes. And you've done that many times. I have. (laughs) (laughs) And at the same time, like I've done things virtually for free Hmm. and have loved it. And I cannot pull myself away from the the computer. Hmm. And so I would say fulfillment is where we find that alignment of contributing, being productive with being our truest selves. Hmm. And it also makes me think about, you know, sometimes we hear the word work and we're like, oh no, what a curse. But Hmm. But when God created work, it was before the fall, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so when I really thought about like work is a gift from God, Mm -hmm. God never intended that work would be gruesome and hard and we Mm -hmm. hate it. Like that's Mm -hmm. not the way that he created work to be. It was to um, express worship unto him to be like him. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I do have hopes that everyone can experience that, but it does take a little bit of digging and finding out what you like and what you don't like before you can really say what fulfills you. Because I know a lot more now than I did 10 years ago. I would even say two years ago Mm -hmm. um, about work. And so, yeah, I I would say all those things kind of help me to understand what fulfillment means. What about you, Remy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that definitely dovetails for me too. I think about it as this marriage between doing work that I know how to do well. It gives me joy to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm able to make an impact on other people, you know, and uh, I also get to make uh, money, you know, that sustains me, you know. I like this quote, um, I I forget who said it, but it's like, you don't make art to make money. You Mm -hmm. make money to make art. And art art, art is just, you know, kind of like a synonym for just anything that you're really doing with passion. And it doesn't have to be like, oh, like painting and all that. But any work that you're doing, you know, you do it because of the inherent joy and the fulfillment it gives you. And when you're able to make money from that, you can live comfortably. Then you can do more of the thing that gives you joy and fulfills you. So like you, money is not the goal. And I know that Mm -hmm. people might be listening to this and say, oh, right. Yeah, it's because you guys have made some money. You're comfortable. That's why you can say that, you know. (laughs) And I get that there are times when it's really when when things are difficult and you cannot Mm -hmm. uh, pay your bills and take care of yourself and take care of your family. You really are not in the headspace to think about uh fulfillment right not to think about it but to actively chase it so i get that right yeah. and so i've been there i've been there i'm sure I you've know. been there too right like yes. you, you just have to push 100%. through and yes. like okay 100%. well i don't have another option this is this is my option and i have mm-hmm. to keep plugging away yeah i agree with you mm-hmm. so having just that marriage between those three things 
um, it's very important for me to know that, you know, I, I can have that, you know, be, I have the joy at what I'm doing. I'm making an impact on other people, either through just serving my client or whatever, and then being able to at least make some money. So those three things are important for work to be fulfilling for me. And in my experience, I mean, uh, for example, if, I, if I'm to give a very concrete example here, when I worked in corporate, I, like I said, I didn't like that environment. It just didn't work for me. And it took me time, you know, to realize that it's just the combination of my personality, my skills, the things that I really want to do that kind of tells me if a situation is working, like a work situation is working for me or not. And that didn't work. And when I left that job, or at least when I was let go, because I was let go because of you know, just the company downsizing and all of that. It was mm-hmm. a good time for me to step back and say, okay, now I am going into a season where I'm going to have to look for another opportunity. What yeah. do I really want? And I think that's a there crucial question that everybody needs to ask ourselves. What do you really want? Mm-hmm. Right. Sometimes we feel like we don't have agency and we just have to do whatever we get and that's yeah. it. Yeah. I feel like just changing that mentality a little bit, even a tiny bit of a shift can actually help us be more fulfilled in asking yourself, how can I figure out a different reality for myself? You know, if I don't like this career or I don't like this job, or I don't like this particular line of work, how can I change that? Mm -hmm. And that that's one crucial question that I had to ask myself. And it took a lot of um, work on my end because if I'm being um, detailed I needed something else and I thought, okay, what do I do? I was working in digital marketing. I didn't like it. I didn't like the social media, the analytics, the, the, the business side of all of that. It wasn't exciting to me, Mm -hmm. but deciding that, okay, what skills do I have? Taking an inventory of my skills and figuring out what can I do? And I realized I've always wanted to do design, graphic design. Okay. Why don't I explore that? You know, and I kept and I started actually exploring that while I was still on that job that I wasn't enjoying because I knew I wanted a different reality for myself. So I started to do that. And um, it took months, you know, of just spending time after work, you know, studying and trying to learn the skill and trying to do this and that to be able to build myself up to that point. But it changed everything, you know, because Mm -hmm. now I realize, oh, I have something else that I can focus on that can give me the kind of flexibility, the kind of joy and fulfillment that I really want out of work. So I think it's a good question for everybody to ask, what does fulfillment mean to me and how can I find a way to get that? I think that's a fair question, especially knowing that there are so many different options. Like you're not locked into anything. Absolutely. You know, like whatever you're doing right now, if you're like, this is not where I want to be a year Mm -hmm. from now, Mm -hmm. you can make a decision to do that, that transformation, right? Mm -hmm. Or that transition Mm -hmm. to where you want to be. And oftentimes it is where you're working in that job that isn't the most fulfilling, but you Mm -hmm. are doing something, you're spending the time, the energy, Mm -hmm. sometimes the money to get to where you want to be outside of your job so Mm -hmm. that you can get there. But if you don't make the small steps now, you'll never Mm -hmm. be able to experience that. And so I love that you shared that, Remy, because that's been my experience as well. I've made many transitions and each time, um, except for one time (laughs) where I (laughs) I had to just pull out and I didn't have a plan B. Um, It was, I was learning and I was experiencing where I wanted to be Mm-hmm. in the meantime so that when the time came I could make that leap of faith mm-hmm. to jump into the next thing that I believe was the most fulfilling yeah yeah I love that I love that can you talk about the work that you do right now just so kind of people get uh some you know yeah. context for where you are yeah yeah so I do a lot of things um but I'll just tell you that I am a web developer mm-hmm. um who does education. Um, I create websites, obviously. Um, But I enjoy doing the creative side and also teaching. And so I have that element within my work as an independent web developer. So I don't work for a company. I have my own um, web agency. And over time, I've learned that I don't do well building or working um, in corporate or in environments where I don't have much autonomy 
Mm-hmm. I will tell you one job that I did enjoy, which has kind of carried over and has been very consistent is when I was a teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, so as you can imagine, a teacher has a lot of autonomy in the classroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so I was able to be as creative as I wanted to be. I was able to teach. I was able to, you know, meet the markers, quote unquote, that we have for students, the curriculum and things of that sort. But I had enough freedom there where mm-hmm. I was like, I can do this long term. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't until I had children that I decided to do something different. Um, but in what I do now, I still get to teach and I love it. And that's been one consistent thing across my entire life that I've mm-hmm. seen that I'm like, in whatever I do, I always need to have that element of teaching. And that way I know, even if the work is not the most fulfilling, if I have that teaching element, I can make it. <laughs> yeah. I can push through. I know. So, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I absolutely love that. And it's just been a joy seeing you uh, thrive um, through the different things that you've done. I remember when you were learning um, web development Mm -hmm. and I was so inspired by that, seeing you really dive into it and, you know, just figure out all the coding and stuff that just goes over my own head. I'm like, this is amazing, you know, and I love Mm -hmm. that. I love that, uh, that you were able to find that flexibility to do the things that you really want to do in the way that you want to do it, you know, Mm -hmm. in a way that um, is um, life given for you. And that's a a term that you always use is um, life given work. And really that's my heart for all the women everywhere, (laughs) you know, is figure out a way to get to the point where you can do work on your terms in a way that really gives you life, you know, and um, yeah, we have to do a lot of trust in God because we cannot divest that from, Um, our experiences, the work that we do and all of that. We have to trust Mm -hmm. God and believe that it's possible. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So I just want to get into that right now. Like if fulfillment at work is a goal for us, for women, for everyone really out there, Mm -hmm. what are the practical ways that we can increase that fulfillment at work? I think one very crucial thing is having the vision. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the first thing, having the vision that this is what you want to do. And sometimes it's not easy to get to that point because I've certainly been in situations, in seasons in my life where I try to look into the future, like have a vision and it's very blurry. Mm -hmm. It's not clear. I have no idea what it is I want to do. I have no idea how I can even do whatever it is I want to do. So I think it's important to figure out a way to find that vision. As women of faith, Like I said, we cannot divest our faith from this process of learning and growing and figuring out what we want to do with our life, with our time, with our work. But I would say, ask God for vision. Mm -hmm. Ask him to direct your path. Ask him to show you what he has in store for your future. He created you. He created you with a purpose. And he's not a God who is trying to withhold from you. He's -hmm. not trying to just withhold all the information that you need all of the revelation that you need to live your life in a way that will make sense. No, he's not withholding from you, but you have to press into God and ask him, what do you want me to do, God? How do you want me to do it? What kind of life do you want me to live? Give me vision. If you feel like um, you're not the most driven person, you know, some people are more driven than others. And even if they're not sure, they're going to just pick a dream and run after it. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes Mm -hmm. that's what you got to do. Just look around, okay, what can I really sink my teeth into? And just go ahead and trust that even if you pick something wrong for you, because sometimes we have that fear. Mm -hmm. Oh, what if I do the wrong thing? What if I spend all this time for, you know, try to uh, like following the wrong path? Well, trust that God will direct you. Yeah, He will put you on the right path. Even if you make a mistake, you have to trust that. And that's a crucial thing. You have to believe that he's got you, you know, so have a vision. You know, come up with a vision, ask him for vision. Whatever you do, you need a vision Mm -hmm. that will help you envision what the future can be. And then you can go from there. Another thing that I think it's crucial is self-awareness, being able to know yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses also? You know, what are the things that you know that you're great at, your skills, your gifts, the things that make you you? Mm -hmm. Then you can begin to piece together, okay, These are one of my skills. Why don't I focus on this? Why don't I do this? Why don't I do that? And just take a step, you know, just take a step. One of the things I think that can really help is um, 
in trying to figure out being more self-aware is uh, personality tests, strengths yeah. tests, all of those things. You know, they are tools that are helpful people because people have done the research. They figured out this, uh, you know, bunch of questions and questionnaires and assessments that you can take. And it will give you an idea of, you know, your strengths, you know, of the, the things that you can begin to focus on or your personality in a way that, okay, these are the things that for somebody of this personality, you might want to think about this. You might want to think about that, you know, right. and um, don't look at this test out as things that are just trying to like label, you No, these are just giving you ideas of how you can begin to take advantage of your strengths. And I think it's useful to think in that way. And the more you are aware of yourself, the kind of person you are, the strengths that you have, the skills that you have, you can begin to take advantage of them. Yes. You know, I, I think that's really uh, helpful. The number three thing that I will mention is belief. And I've talked a little bit about it when thinking about finding vision for your future is the power of belief and confidence and having a positive outlook. I think sometimes we get into this rot of feeling that because things have been so hard, we don't see a way out. Mm -hmm. We're almost jaded to the point where we don't believe that some things can happen for us. And when mm -hmm. we look at other people, maybe succeeding, maybe they're doing well, we become uh, sort of negative, you know, in looking at them and saying, oh, well, must be nice for you. Well, it can be great for you too. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to believe that it is possible for you to figure out what you want to do and do it in a way that is authentic to you, brings you joy, you're able to make money, you're able to just enjoy your work. So mm -hmm. trust that it is possible, have that confidence that it is possible and um, lean into God and you know let him give insight about how to move forward um, with your life. I love it. Those are all great tips for me. Yeah, yeah. I hope that's helpful for everyone listening. Yeah, I think it's very crucial for us to think about work in a very holistic way from a place of faith and joy, not just as something that is drudgery, like we're just going through the motions. We don't enjoy it, but we have to do it anyway. You know, mm -hmm. things like that. It's possible to thrive and be happy and fulfilled at work. For sure. All right. I love that. I think we've had a good conversation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Remy. I, I love talking about work. I feel like I talk about it a lot, too. Yes, you do. <laughs> uh, with my friends, but also just with conversations that I have online with other women specifically who are looking to make transitions into mm -hmm. tech because that's the field that I'm in. And so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I love these conversations and they're needed because we want to see people uh, thrive and, yes, absolutely. you know, experience that fulfillment. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you for inviting me to join this discussion with you. Of course. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Thank you. All right, everyone. So we have this thing on the podcast where we like to share just thoughts and ideas from podcasts that we love and we listen to. And yeah, Candice, do you have any insight from any podcast that you've listened to recently that you want to share with us? Yes. So I was so surprised when I came across this video podcast that CC Winans does. Oh my God. Did you know really? that CC Winans has a podcast? No. Um, yeah. So it's on her YouTube channel, but um, I came across her because I am a fan of J Jackie Hill Perry. Absolutely, so yes. sometimes I'll just like go to YouTube and I'll mm -hmm. just put in Jackie Hill Perry to see what's the latest that, you know, yeah. she's been teaching or whatever. And I saw that she was a guest with CC Winans. And mm -hmm. what I loved about their discussion um, was that they were talking about why they needed each other and not just like Jackie and Miss Cece, mm -hmm. but why the older generations mm -hmm. need the younger and the younger need the older. Need the and older. it was, oh my goodness, it was such an encouraging discussion because you could see the humility of mm -hmm. Cece Winans, like mm -hmm. saying how much she learns from Jackie mm -hmm. Hill Perry. Mm -hmm. And then of course, Jackie talking about when I was a little girl, I would listen to Alabaster Box and, you yeah. know, like yeah. I mean, just had the impact of mm. Christ centered music in her life. And mm. um, it, it was just a beautiful discussion. And Cece also talked about how in her age, at her age now, she feels like 
God has called her to host these conferences called the Generations Conferences. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of it is to bring the older generations with the new. Yes, Mm -hmm. to bring them together so that they can learn from one another. And also because that's the way that God designed it. I want to encourage anyone, if you have the opportunity, go to YouTube. So she does like a video podcast. Go to YouTube um, and go visit Cece Winans' channel and look at the one where she talks with Jackie Hill Perry. I think you will be encouraged. Mm -hmm. After that discussion, I was wanting to uh, talk more deeply about things with my mom Mm -hmm. and kind of like get some insight from her and invite her to speak more into my life not just as a mom, but as a woman of God. And I know that she's like opened the door for me to do the same. And so it was Mm. just um, reflective for me to think about how, how am I ensuring that I am there for Mm. people, no matter what their age and also having an open door of opportunity for people to speak into my life younger and older than I am. So yeah, it was so good for me. Oh my God, that's so powerful. That just reminds me of Titus in the, mm-hmm. the Bible. Yeah, with yeah. The, you know, older women and younger women. We have so much to learn from each other. And sometimes the generational gap, you know, the things that, you know how different generations, the different things that we hold um, closer, the different mm-hmm. things that we feel like, oh, we are open to doing this. And then the older generation are like, ah. Right. And then the younger generation are like, oh, you know, just things that we don't agree on and just mm-hmm. putting all of those aside and knowing that we still have a lot to learn from yes. each other you know that's beautiful i'll definitely yeah. um go and check that out thank you for sharing that that's awesome yeah, you're welcome all right so i want to share about uh this podcast that i found called the lazy genius podcast by kendra mm-hmm. adachi <gasps> and i've yeah. heard of her yeah yes she's amazing she's amazing i love this um this episode that i listened to she talked about how to know what brings you joy mm. and i think it kind of dovetails with the conversation we've, we've had today about work because one of the points that she makes in that podcast is um she says sometimes we feel like it's hard you know to find what exactly is it that i'm excited about doing and she said mm-hmm. pick something Pick something, anything that sounds fun and exciting that you want to explore and just focus on it for a period of time. Hmm. It sounds simple, but I think it's really cool. And I love that because it's so easy to get into a rut in life. We go through the motions, we settle into our routines Mm -hmm. and pretty soon life feels like, nah, you know, work feels like a dead weight that we're just dragging around because, you know, it's hard and we don't enjoy it and, it can really suck the joy out of life. Mm. But what if we simply gave ourselves permission to try something new? Yeah. Maybe it's something you've been thinking about, like, ah, it'll be fun to do that, you know? Well, why not? Why not why give it a not? shot, yeah. you know? So we've talked about work and fulfillment today. Maybe, you know, for everyone listening, you feel this way about your work. Well, what might a different reality look like and how can you take some concrete steps to begin to find joy at work and in the things that you do. I think it's a bold thought. It doesn't sound very revolutionary, but I think it is, you know, I encourage you to try it. I remember when I decided I was going to learn how to ride a bike. I had never learned how to ride a bike. And um, I thought, you know, I really want to do this, you know, and it was hard. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was very hard to try to learn uh, to ride a bike as an adult, like a full grown adult. This was just like, four years ago that I, I that I did yeah. this. So you remember that? Yeah. And I kept <laughs> falling down. And I remember I was having my bike riding lessons with nine-year-olds, with five-year-olds. And I'm like, whatever, I'm just going to do mm-hmm. it. I mean, I dove into it and I had fun. And um, yeah, and in this season, I'm already thinking, what do I want to do? Because I feel like I don't have enough hobbies. I want to do mm-hmm. something that just makes me happy, that just brings yeah. me joy. And um, the other day I thought about, I think it would be really fun to just go out to the park somewhere and fly a kite. I can't wait. Yeah, I cannot wait until my son is old enough so we can just get a kite, go to the park and just have fun. So, yeah, I I love that thought. Just things that just bring you joy. So, yeah, I'm Mm. just encouraging everyone listening. um, Yeah, just think about it. Thanks to Kendra Dachi for this simple, you know, but powerful prompt i know it's something i'm excited to keep uh doing in my life that's awesome thanks for sharing Remy.
Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the podcast. We'd love to hear your thoughts and perspectives. My question for you today is, are you fulfilled at work right now? If not, what would you like to be different and how can you make that happen? Thanks for listening to this episode of the Driven Introvert Podcast. If you enjoyed this conversation, please take a moment to click the follow button on your podcast app or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. As always, don't forget to take courage, trust God, and go pursue your big ideas. See you next time. The Driven Introvert Podcast is produced by ShePack.com and Remy Roy with content, editing, and strategy expertise from Candice Zakaria and Aishat Olarewaju. Want to ask a question or share a comment on a future episode? Email us today at thedrivenintrovert at sheepart.com or click on the link in the show notes to record your question in a voicemail. Hey friend, do you know your strengths? I know you want to live a fulfilling life, right? You want to feel like your life is your own and not like you're in the wrong movie acting the wrong part. But do you know your strengths? Are you operating from your strengths at work and in your calling? Or does everything feel hard and like a chore? I know what it feels like to not know where you belong. And for me, discovering my strengths and really taking steps to deploy them effectively has been very crucial to helping me feel more fulfilled and excited about life. If this resonates with you, if you'd like to find out more about your strengths, I have a free gift for you. It's called the Uncover Your Strengths Free Guide. In this guide, you'll find tools, tests, and resources to help you find your strengths. There'll be space in there to write down your discoveries There'll be reflection questions to help you dig deeper and prayers to help you seek the Lord for wisdom on how to move forward. I hope you lean into this. I hope you not only download this guide, but also use it, grow and be empowered to pursue your next steps in faith, work and life. You can get it today at shepacked.com slash strengths. The link will also be in the show notes. That's shepacked.com slash strengths.